Federal data from March to October show a nationwide explosion of kids and teenagers in mental health crisis from depression to anxiety to substance use disorder. For some kids who experience a mental health episode, the only immediate option is a visit to a local emergency room. And because of Maine's chronic shortage of pediatric mental health beds and services, a growing number of children and teenagers are spending a lot of time in the ER. And we are not talking about just a few hours here. News Center Maine's Vivian Lee tells us they are there for days, even weeks. And Vivian, the emergency rooms aren't even equipped to serve these kids, right? All right, Cindy, this, the sad truth is no, they are not. I spoke with one family who had no option but the ER and watched their son and physically confined to a small room in a rural hospital. Now, COVID-19 precautions are adding to what many are calling a broken system. Something needs to happen. The parents of a 15 year old boy are speaking out for the first time about the state's mental health system, a system they say failed their son not once but twice during the most difficult times in his life. We are concealing the couple's identity to protect their son. He doesn't need the stigma. He's already yeah. stigmatized enough. The teenager has high functioning autism and Tourette syndrome, a condition that affects the brain and nerves, causing uncontrolled sounds and movements. Despite early intervention programs and counseling, his aggressive behaviors increased as he got older. Last summer, the teenager was living in a residential treatment facility when he suffered a serious mental health episode. He was definitely in crisis. He was very violent, very paranoid towards the staff and towards the other residences in the residential facility. The only option, the ER at Callis Regional Hospital, located in the Washington County city of about 3,000 along the Canadian border. We were there for 12 days and um, we just sat with him. One of us was there, I would say 99% of the time. Where the teenager languished without any specialized care. His parents worked with a state crisis team to find a bed in one of four hospitals in Maine that provide psychiatric treatment for kids 18 and younger. Those include Northern Light Acadia Hospital in Bangor, Spring Harbor Hospital in Portland, St. Mary's Regional Hospital in Lewiston, and Northern Maine Medical Center in Fort Kent. Every day for nearly two weeks, the couple was told there were no openings for their son, stuck in a tiny room behind these walls. With only 110 to 120 pediatric mental health beds in the entire state, all four hospitals are grappling with growing waiting lists of kids in crisis. Precautions against COVID-19 has made finding placements even more difficult. It's no one's fault. It is not their fault. It's not my son's fault. It's not our fault. It's the system. The system is broken. Following a change to his medication, their son was discharged back to the residential treatment facility. But several months later in November, following another episode, the teenager ended up back at the same emergency department in Callis. His parents say being stuck in a busy emergency room again was overwhelming. Why am I here? What's happening? Why is this taking so long? Why can I just come home? He isn't here because he wants to be here. You know, he's here because he's a danger to himself and to other people and, you know, and he needs help. With limited family visits due to COVID-19, the isolation this time went on for weeks. With the hospital staff not trained in behavioral health care, the couple watched their son fade mentally. They also say the teenager was heavily sedated to control his behaviors. This time he was stuck in the ER for nearly a month. It's literally um, a holding pen, you know, just waiting until there's a place for him to go where they can treat him. Um, so he spent 29 days sitting there. Didi Travis, the director of community relations here at Calis Regional Hospital, tells News Center Maine in a statement that staff worked very hard to develop a therapeutic relationship with every patient and their family and do understand the importance of safe and dignified care and do advocate for the needs of the patient. Scott Oxley is the president of Acadia Hospital and a member of the Northern Light Healthcare System. Acadia staff provide mental health consultations and evaluations to 17 hospitals in and outside the system from Caribou to York. On any given day, on average, a dozen children are waiting in the emergency departments at those facilities for an inpatient bed at Acadia. 
a backlog that's been going on for years due to a lack of pediatric community health programs and residential treatment centers, especially in rural areas. Unfortunately, the state of Maine just doesn't have sufficient resources to manage the illness on that front end of the of the illness cycle. What we're talking about now is the back end when the entire system has failed. To stem the flow of kids from spiraling into emergency rooms or even worse, police custody, state lawmakers are considering a bill that would require Maine's Department of Health and Human Services to collect data on extended stays in emergency rooms. Key information needed to identify gaps in appropriate treatment and develop more resources to build a more comprehensive system for kids in crisis. Mary Jane Krebs is the president of Spring Harbor Hospital. She testified in favor of the bill, saying children stuck in emergency rooms for long periods of time often feel forgotten and abandoned. They become hopeless, they give up, um, they regress, they become uh, violent towards themselves and others. As for these parents, their son was finally admitted to Acadia Hospital where he received the proper treatment. I'm seeing some growth and some progress. I'm anxious he is returning to the facility, the treatment facility that he had been at, um, with the goal of him coming home and being back with us. Anxious about the very real chance their son and the sons and daughters of many other families will slip through an already overstretched safety net again. Will my son fall back into the cycle where he ends up, you know, back at the emergency room waiting for a bed? It, it could happen in the next two weeks. Now, again, that legislation that passed would require DHHS to collect data on the number of children who would not be identified remaining remaining in the ER for, ext ER for extended stays. Now, that information would be po posted on a public we website. And a DHHS spokesperson tells New, New Center, Maine, that the department has concerns, especially about those patients' privacy, because it impacts a small number of kids. Now, we'll have much more information and a statement, a full statement from DHHS and information on mental health services and resources on our website and mobile app. I'm Vivian Lee, New Center, Maine.